Well, 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 the mainstream media continues to come after us for our opinions that they don't like. The fact that we continue to make opinions that don't line up with their agendas just continues to make them shake, literally. So, <laughs> there's this new article out called, Rotten Tomatoes May Require Stricter Verification to Fight Trolls. Trolls. Everyone who has an opinion that they don't agree with is a troll. You're all just a bunch of trolls if you don't have the political agenda lineup that they are looking for. So, and am I saying that, that none of those people were trolls? No. Sure, there are, are definitely some of the people, for sure, who were trolls. I mean, that's just a given fact because this is the internet. Everywhere you go, there's at least going to be a troll somewhere. But, you know... It was down to 28% for want to see. And when you looked at the actual comments for why people didn't want to see the movie, I didn't see any that were actually trolling. None of them were actually sexist about Brie Larson. None of them were actually hateful. Most of them were just saying, eh, I don't want to see the movie because of what Brie Larson said. I don't want to see the movie because it looks boring, etc., etc. But those are all just a bunch of trolls. If you have an opinion, even if it's a respectable opinion, even if you're being respectful with your opinion, you are a troll. Dirty, rotten troll. Um, getting to this article, Rotten Tomatoes may require stricter verification to fight trolls! Re. <laughs> Beyond this, or perhaps in addition to this, Rotten Tomatoes has found itself at the center of a debate regarding trolls who overwhelm the site in the days leading up to the release of a film they don't like and negatively review it. Oh, how terrible. How terrible that the overwhelming majority don't want to see a film. Ooh, that's horrible, bunch of trolls. <laughs> In fact, the Rotten Tomatoes trolls became so irritating in the lead up to the release of Captain Marvel and that actually kind of brings me a little bit of joy that these mainstream media sites are actually irritated by us and, and our opinions. That actually is amazing to me. That the site changed its policy, disallowing users to comment on a film prior to its release. Because, whew, don't want to have those, those free speech opinions. No, no, no. No opinions here. Let's say that the overwhelming majority gave it so many positive want to see ratings that that they were like, "Whoa, these are way too many. There must be some sort of there must be something going on here. There can't be this many people that are giving it a positive rating. We must censor the site." No, they they wouldn't have done that. They would not have done that. They would not have done what they have done if Captain Marvel wasn't at a 27% on Rotten Tomatoes want to see. This never would have happened if Captain Marvel was at a 99% want to see. Now, according to THR, a Rotten Tomatoes rep has said that tighter restrictions, including making users verify having seen a film before reviewing it, may need to be implemented. In, in um, the grand scheme of things, you know, that's fine, I guess. You know, it doesn't really matter to me either way. But the fact that it's part of this whole censorship thing that they have going on right now just makes it that much worse and this is where it gets really good this is where it gets really really juicy the captain marvel incident in which hordes of trolls lashed out due to the gender of its protagonist which is not true and these people are idiots and they continue to spin this lie even though that is not the case that is never the case none of the want to see things that I saw on Captain Marvel were saying that they didn't want to see the movie because it had a woman in it. <sighs> was unfortunately not the first of its kind for Rotten Tomatoes either. Past battles with those who are more interested, get this, these people are saying, past battles with those who more interested in gender or skin color than cinema also occurred with the female-led reboot of Ghostbusters as well as films like Black Panther and Star Wars The Last Jedi. Why didn't we do the same with Alita if that was the case? Alita was a film that also came out literally like only a month before Captain Marvel came out. And the want to see for that was very high. It was like a 97%. But it has a woman as the lead. So what's your excuse for that? 
the critics have a way lower rating for that film than the, the audience does. Does that make the critics more sexist than we are? Your logic is so inconsistent right now, and it's so stupid, and it's so easy just to tear it apart. Identity politics started with Hollywood, not with the fans. Hollywood was the first to start using race and gender as promotional cards for their film and promotional vantage points for their films. In the marketing and the the actual film itself, the writing, the characters, everything. It was Hollywood who started it first. Don't come after us and say that we were the ones who are more interested in gender or skin color. Literally, we wouldn't have any problem with any of this at all all if it wasn't for you guys making it a big deal first we are the ones that love cinema want to see fun movies we we want to see superhero movies that are fun enjoyable and you know give us a good time at the cinema we don't want to see superhero movies that use feminist agendas as the uh the selling point of the film these people are so delusional, they can't even see, they can't see that they are the ones who are making a big deal out of race and gender. Normal people like me, like you, don't care. We don't care about the race and gender of our characters. We don't care what color their skin is or what they have between their legs. We don't care. Elite is a perfect example of that. Black Panther is a perfect example of that. There are so many other superheroes that have been released and characters in cinema in general who aren't white males that we love. But we've never had a problem with any of that until you guys started using their race and gender as your promotional stunts. And that is the problem. You guys are the problem. The mainstream media, Hollywood, you guys are the ones that are making identity politics such a big issue. The only reason that we are talking about it is because you guys are making it a big deal. And we're not saying that we that we don't like women or b black people in our films. That is not what we've ever said. Sure, yes, okay. Yes, there are some people that have said it. I, I totally get that. I totally get the, that, but that is a small percentage of the people. These people are idiots, and they continue to just make themselves look even more stupid the more articles they write about these because their logic is so inconsistent and it's just so easy to, to dismantle what they're saying. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rotten Tomatoes is uh, heading down a, a tough road because they are censoring what, the, what people are saying about films. They are censoring our voices, and that is a big issue. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you all very soon in another video. Talk to you later. Bye.